having said all those things that you have just said yeah. and being as successful as you are in this digital universe. In fact, you're actually a pioneer in this digital universe when we come to think about it as a business developer, entrepreneur, everything else. Mm -hmm. So Trish, you've done a lot of projects, you've done a lot of things, but some of them haven't turned out the way you had expected or thought they should. And some of them are pretty big. Can you think yeah. of one of the big ones and then tell yeah. me what you learned from it? Yeah, that's a really good question too. What immediately springs to mind there are a couple of things, but there's just one big standout because it appears to be a bit of a pattern. In two of my business ventures, it was taking on a business partner. Now, there are loads of upside benefits to that. And I want to reiterate, I think those upside benefits happen in the very early stages of business building. When you need either skills or capital, and this was in both cases, one for my physical business being real estate and the other one being my digital business, my online businesses, I took on partners, business partners, and it was brilliant in the short term because they brought to the table skills that I needed and wanted. And it also opened up more opportunities because what you're doing when you're bringing somebody else into your business, they have different perspectives and they can bring that diversity to you. And you build fast and quick in those early stages. And then something sort of happens. And in both cases for me, I think it was this misalignment of values. After 12 to 24 months, that seems to be like the honeymoon period of bringing on a business partner. Within 12 to 24 months, you start to really work out each other's values. So it goes a little deeper when taking on a business partner. It's not just the skills and the education and the capital that they bring. It's do they align with me at my very core? Do they have the same values as me? My first business partner, and this was in real estate, and I'd say business partner, they weren't financially invested. However, there was a heavy reliance on the skill that they brought so in my real estate business, this gentleman came into the situation because he was based in the United States and I was based here in Australia. And I wanted a way to access some really great real estate transactions within a specific area. And to do that, I needed someone on the ground. I needed a field partner. And so I found this field partner and amazing. Like he brought to me transactions and I didn't have to travel thousands of miles to see them. I trusted him. I appreciated what he brought to the table and it worked. It was working for the first sort of 12, 24 months. And all of a sudden started to work out that he valued profit. He valued, yeah. And I'm a business owner. You think, yeah, well, that's crazy because everyone would value profit, right? However, it's where do you put that in priority to people? So he was valuing profit over people and I was valuing people over profit. Now you think, well, how can you do that in business? Well, very easily because he was all about the money and he was all about bring it in and bring it in fast. And I was saying, well, hang on, hold on. I'm bringing Australian investors from thousands of miles away. We need to take this a little slower, right? They're not ready to jump in with their credit card or with their loans or with their cash into a transaction that quickly. We've just got to slow this down a little bit. We've got to make sure it's right for them. No, 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 no. And he would put the pressure on uh, to make sure that that transaction would go through very, very quick at all costs in some cases. Okay. And that's when we realized that we were completely misaligned in our values. That was the first example. We parted ways as a result of that happening, because that is what happens. The, the upside to that is I got to where I got to. Those first 12 to 24 months open up a whole new horizon for me. You think your business as a result of him leaving is going to fall down and collapse. However, what happens is these opportunities open up and those field partners, those other field partners that I'm dealing with came to me and said, Trish, we will deal with you direct. We will bring you the transactions. We don't have to take them to him. It's all good. 
So all of a sudden I had more control. All of a sudden, you know, I had more profit looking after the people, right? I had more profit uh, as a result of them coming directly to me. So that was the first experience. The second experience was in the online digital space. I had somebody, a friend of 12, 15 years come to me and offer me the opportunity to be part of a, a digital, a digital business affiliate sales and be part of a, a community that helped to do that. And again, I thought brilliant. She brings technical skills to the table. She brings everything that I'm more of a marketer. I'm more of sort of the person that creates content and gets in front of video and creates podcasts or creates membership sites. She brought the technical expertise again, 24 months later. Yeah, it was brilliant. Brought all the skills. However, as a result of her relationship, he made some or oh, he gave her some, not limitations, but what is the word? He said to her, it's either the business or me, right? So he actually gave her a choice. And we were in London at the time. We were traveling with our digital business. And she ultimately came back to Australia and made a decision and made a decision that it was him and not the business and had to walk away from that. And again, so the downside, it was devastating. All of my marketing was geared around the two of us building this business as two accountants, leaving our professions and starting in the online space. Devastating, really, really devastating. And I thought that was the end of the business. No, again, rising from the ashes. <laughs> I had to relearn. I had to learn the digital skills, the technical skills, and that took time. However, incredibly rewarding. Uh, and again, she got me to where I needed to be. And then I had to then just continue on as an independent soul person. So I hope that reveals quite a bit. So the caution when you're taking on your business partner and making sure your values and your vision is aligned. I think it's really important to make sure that in business and in marriage, you got to make sure you have the right person. That's, that's, right. That's, that, that's just, you're going to fail otherwise. That's all there is to it. it it's just going to yeah. come to a divorce at some point. Yeah. But in reality, that's basically the matter at hand. You need to understand each other's values. You need to understand what they bring to the table what they're not take, bringing to the table. And if you can live with that, if you can be really happy with that, if you can get that synergy going, because in every case you had the synergy. And I love what you say about, well, I thought it was over, but actually you didn't get that far to just get that far. You got there and now what do I do with what I have and how do I play to that strength? You've obviously done very well at it, Trish, really well. 